Here in the Bedecker Plastics Warehouse, we stock a large inventory of static control thermoplastic materials ready for purchase. Electrostatic dissipative or anti-static thermoplastic materials are typically used in critical applications where consistency and reliability in the control of electrical flow are critical. These ESD materials are typically used to prevent the buildup of static electricity. They are just conductive enough to bleed away static charges, yet insulative enough to protect their applications from larger current flows. When testing ESD materials, critical surface resistivity measurement errors are often made which yield inaccurate results. This may lead engineers and designers to determine that their ESD materials may not be performing as expected when in fact they very well may be performing as intended. Let's move into the Bedecker Quality Laboratory to review proper ESD testing procedures. Here in the Bedecker Quality Laboratory, we inspect materials and finished machined or injection molded parts. Traditional plastics that are non-electrostatic are typically insulators, meaning that they resist the flow of an electrical current. The flow of electricity across the surface of a material is measured in ohms per square area. A fully insulated plastic will have a surface resistivity measurement of greater than 10 to the 12th ohms per square. There are also conductive plastics available which occur when a certain amount of conductive filler such as carbon fibers or metal powders are incorporated into the plastic matrix. Conductive materials allow for the flow of electrical current both through and across their surface. A conductive plastic will have a surface resistivity of less than 10 to the 4th ohms per square. The more conductive a material, the more readily the current will flow across the material's surface and the lower the surface resistivity measurement. ESD plastics are materials that fall between being insulative and being conductive. Users of ESD materials are typically looking for these materials to have a surface resistivity somewhere between 10 to the 4th and 10 to the 12th ohms per square. Many people try to measure their ESD materials using simple electrical voltmeters which use point-to-point -point probes. The results are extremely variable and completely inaccurate. These types of meters will not yield accurate results for ESD materials. These meters are accurate for fully homogeneous materials like fully insulative plastics or fully conductive metal plates. Critical to understand is that the ESD or static dissipative plastics are not considered fully homogeneous. When using such a point-to-point -point probe, your probe may or may not be in contact with conductive elements of the polymer. For measuring ESD plastics that are considered non-homogeneous, it is extremely important to use a device which records resistivity using an area-to-area -area measurement. The proper testing standard for measuring static dissipative planar materials is ANSI EOS ESD S1111. This test method ensures accuracy of the surface resistivity results by using an area-to-area -area probe under the correct conditions. The standard calls for the use of a ring tester which is comprised of two concentric rings made of a conductive material which makes contact with the material under test. The test probe also weighs five pounds to ensure good solid contact with the material is made and the test uses a consistent 100 volts. Using this ESD S1111 test will ensure accurate resistivity readings. There are other lower cost, more portable probes that also measure an area to area resistivity that have been found to yield acceptable results. One popular device is the pinion meter. The pinion meter uses 30 volts and also has round area to area surface probes that require good contact with the test material. Understandably, there are times when small machined or non-planar parts must be measured. These intricate machined parts make them difficult to accurately measure and almost impossible to measure using either a ring tester or a pinion meter. In these cases, I have seen smaller area-to-area -area probes that are on the market utilized. Just make sure that they are marketed for and suitable to meet the ANSI ESD STM test method. If you have any questions related to anti-static plastics, including how to accurately test with them, or for assistance in selecting the most appropriate ESD material for your application, 
please reach out to Bedecker Plastics. One of our technical service engineers will be happy to support your efforts. Please feel free to add your comments below, like and share this video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.